Hi, good morning everyone. Welcome to the webinar today. My name is Jamie Royston Smith. I'd like to welcome you all here today. Uh, I'm Business Development Manager here at TaxCalc. Um, yeah, just quickly I'll introduce myself. I've been with the business nine years. Um, mainly my role involves helping practices switch to TaxCalc or if you're an existing customer, I, I basically try to help you maximise your use and knowledge of the suite. Um, so yeah, it's my pleasure to welcome you all today. Uh, just run through a little bit of housekeeping before we kick into the content and the slides, um, before we then go on to a demonstration a little bit later on. So approximate runtime today around 50 minutes, but please do stick around to the end. We've got question and answer uh, session lined up there. So please feel free to submit your questions uh, if anything arises on the webinar and we will endeavour to answer them at the end. If we don't get time to answer all of them, um, we do record all the questions. So we'll try get and get back to you and um, locate your contact details afterwards as well. So as I say, we have some content and slides to share with you first before moving on to a demonstration of uh, the main product we're showcasing today, which is the TaxCalc Document Manager powered by SmartVault. And we'll be showing you how this integrates with TaxCalc and the key touch points of that integration from a customer's point of view. So why are we here today? Well, um, at Accountex in May 2019, we announced a strategic partnership with a leading document management provider, SmartVault. And over the last 18 months or so, we've been working hard to integrate the two systems. Um, why now, you ask? Well, I guess with the second you know, lockdown now upon us and with the self-assessment season looming, we felt now is the best time to open up the conversation around digitising your paperless workflow and to introduce the, uh, the tighter integration that's, that's now available. My co-host for today is George Kizzes from SmartVault. George, would you like to say hi and introduce yourself? Yes, thanks, Jamie. And thanks again to everyone who's joined the webinar this morning. I hope it will be of some good use to you. Um, as Jamie mentioned, my name is George Kaisis. I'm an account manager here at SmartVault. Uh, my role basically consists of speaking to accountants on a daily basis, uh, mainly to demo uh, the SmartVault software and tell them how it could be a good fit for their practice. I also run the kind of the management, the day-to-day -day management of their account once they're onboarded with SmartVault, making sure they get the right training and support um, from our consultants and make sure they've got the best experience once they're onboarded with SmartVault. And I'll uh, be speaking to you a little bit more shortly, but I'll hand back to you for now, Jamie. Thanks, yeah, George will be demonstrating much of the product later on. Um, but before we do, um, we'll um, we'll go through some content and slides to kick us off. So, um, yeah, what I'd like to do first is just start with an overview of the TaxCalc journey and where we've been and what's brought us to where we are today. If you're not already familiar with us, um, it was only 15 years ago we launched our tax product and brought simple, affordable tax software to market, um, a market that was full of complex and expensive solutions, really. Um, that tax module attracted an initial 4,000 customers very, very quickly and allowed us to branch into other areas of a practice life cycle, including accounts production. By 2013, we had become one of the main players in the UK. We took on customer feedback and decided to expand to a full service offering, including practice management as well. Just three years later, um, we believe we, were, we won the race to the cloud. We were one of the first tax software houses globally to offer a secure cloud database and flexible remote working tools. And as the industry and legislation has changed and evolved, so, so have we, when we've encouraged practices all the while to go fully digital and transition their workflows into something that's automated and yeah, does the job really. So helping practices move from Excel or manual tools into automated software tools that help their day-to-day -day operations. Uh, this year, we believe we complete the picture with the release of the document manager uh, solution and client portal um, powered by SmartVault. So that's what we're here to talk to you about today. Here's a full lineup of, of the suite. It's quite surprising how many different modules and, and uh, productivity tools we now have. But of course, the main focus is really within practice management and how we can hopefully digi digitize your paperless, um, your, your workflow system in terms of paper and um, documents. So yeah, we're all acutely aware 2020 has presented a number of challenges to our customers and we believe this, this release is the perfect solution to help firms adjust to the new normal. 
one major challenge firms are facing at the moment is is the problem of securely accessing your data particularly clients data whilst working from home of course home working means that rather than being connected to a professional secured network like you might have in an office we're instead relying on consumer broadband connections to, to keep our systems safe yeah just to touch in on that jamie um just to expand a little bit so um, it is likely that you know the security measures you've got in place at home just aren't as robust as what you'd have in the office. Um, but I think the main thing to just think about is that the people that are trying to get into your data, especially in accountants' data, which is you know very sensitive um, and personal information, is that they're looking for routes into your network to find something which is stored locally. That's easier to get for them. So if we can maybe put our um, our sensitive documents in a secure online environment that's able to um, encrypt and back up that data mm. that does help mitigate that risk against those cyber criminals absolutely and I suppose one way that firms are trying to get around that um, is perhaps via email and emailing sensitive documents if they are now working from home and of course we should all be acutely aware of the the higher higher than normal risks associated with with email so we do need to be aware of that Exactly. And as well, just to jump in again, Jamie, um, to answer the kind of the question you've got on screen here, um, is email, you know, the safest way to exchange sensitive information? And it's not really, uh, especially the types of documents that accountants hold, which I just mentioned. And I actually ran a, re a recent webinar um, which highlighted the security flaws associated with email. And I remember mentioning that 91% of cyber attacks actually originate through email. So that could be phishing emails, um, clicking on malicious links, even email, email interception. And the thing is, if we look at using different ways of sharing information which aren't email, we're immediately reducing our exposure to email and those attacks. So again, mitigating those risks. Absolutely. Yeah, interesting stat there. Thank you. And not being office based, of course, means we might be meeting customers remotely. We, we don't have the luxury of meeting with them face to face to collect documents or, or to get something either approved or signed. Um, so how can we integrate that that kind of side of things with the solution as well? And what many firms have done to move away from emailing documents is to introduce maybe something like Dropbox or Microsoft OneDrive to exchange documents with their customers. However, again, these systems are not really built specifically for accountants and, and built to hold the type of sensitive information that, that you will be dealing with day to day. Yeah, I completely agree with that, Jamie. Um, and I actually tend to get the feeling that things like Dropbox and OneDrive, maybe even Google Drive as well, which do a similar thing, it seems to be maybe a quick fix um, to on the road to finding the right solution for the long run. Um, so a lot of accountants I actually speak to, they tend to use systems that are driven by what their clients want to use, which to an extent is a really good thing. Um, but when there are other systems out there which are designed especially for the accounting workflow and how they want to be more productive, you know, it's not really best practice to be using these um, solutions like Dropbox and OneDrive. Absolutely. And of course, those sorts of systems don't typically integrate with the source of the documents because they're, you know, best of breed separate systems. So if we can, if we can integrate with something like your compliance system like TaxCalc, um, perhaps we can remove additional administration where you're exporting you know, copies of tax returns or final sets of accounts out of the system and then into the, the document management system to be stored there permanently. So how can we integrate the two? Great, so uh, to introduce SmartVault and I guess what it can do to um, solve these kind of problems, I'll hand over to George to take you through the next couple of slides. Brilliant. Thank you, Jamie. And for those of you who don't really know much about SmartVault, um, we are a, in a nutshell, really, we're a cloud-based document storage, document management, and file sharing system. So that means that we're a place in the cloud where you can put all of your documents, whether that is for internal purposes, so just documents you want to um, store away for your own future reference as a maybe a, com a company intranet. But then we do have the client portal element. So rather than using things like email to share sensitive information, we're now going to upload that document to a client portal. Your client can then log in securely with their email and password, two-factor authentication as well. They can view that document, action it, send something back to you as well. The key thing here is that we are designed 
specifically for accountants and uh, rather than kind of talking you through how you'll be able to see exactly how we do um, aim towards your profession when I jump into the demo shortly. As we're here today to talk about the, you know, the tax calc integration, um, what we can do is we've now kind of released a really seamless integration where we're able to take any document from tax calc and straight away file it away into the folder structures which you've got into SmartVault. So really helping you be a bit more productive and save time in your general day-to-day -day work to you know, focus on the more meaningful tasks, maybe add a bit more value to your clients as well. Again, that's really built to improve efficiency with your client base and then one of the key things here is that especially of the year we've had now having to work from home it poses the question can we you know work on paper now with limited access to maybe going out to see our clients face to face if you're regularly doing that limited access to actually go into the office and do that work so everything is definitely going to the cloud which again is going to help you become a lot more um, cost effective as well So a few of the key features of SmartVault, and you'll definitely get to see these as, when I jump into the demo, is firstly the security features. So as I've just mentioned there, we do have two-factor authentication, which you can um, use to um, basically log in with not only your email and password, we can have a verification code sent to your, um, your email or your mobile phone. That is completely optional, so you can make, make sure that it's forced for all of your employees or staff to use, or you don't have to. Every document that is uploaded to SmartVault is encrypted to the standard AES-256. So that's a similar sort of standard you get with your online banking. So really secure. We're also going to be backing up all of that data for you. And I know it's quite a big one because a lot of um, the accounts I speak to, they're mainly doing their own backups. So maybe they're saving a document locally then saving it on an external hard drive. Again, it's just things which are eating into your time over and over again. We can um, set up uh, certain permissions so we can make sure that members of staff only have access to the things they need access to so we can make sure if they're only working on a certain number of clients that's all they can see in smart vault we don't, maybe we don't want to give them too much access to other clients that they don't need to be working on in, in a similar way we do have that client portal for file sharing and we can make it really simple for our clients by only giving them access to the areas which they need access to to maybe upload a document or or down, download and view a document we do also have um, desktop applications and mobile applications. One, the desktop applications I'll be showing you shortly, uh, but they just offer a really nice localized feel of working. So something which a lot of you might be familiar to in, um, let's say, a, um, a Windows folder structure environment. And we can also update our client, which is really nice. Um, every time you upload a document, we can set notifications up either instantly or daily or weekly. So your client knows exactly when you share a document with them. And we can also have that on the other end so you know exactly when your client has logged in and viewed that document so it might save you a bit of hassle chasing them up for a bit of um, a bit of work you're waiting for them to action great um yeah george over to you for the demonstration so um yeah i'll just make you the presenter now Perfect. Thank you, Jamie. And let me know if you have any problems there, but you should see a button share your screen. Yeah, brilliant. You've got that come through? We have. Perfect. Great start. So um, everyone, really the structure of the, this demonstration, I'm going to be kicking things off in the cloud environment of SmartVault from the accountant side. So that was what we, we would call the user. I'll then show you the desktop applications. Um, as I've just mentioned, they give you a really nice local feel of working. And I'll then show you the, um, the client portal. So you have an idea of what your clients would be experiencing when they log into their portal. And then I'm going to hand back to Jamie at the end, who's going to show you how the integration of TaskCalc works as well. So starting off, I'm in the cloud environment of SmartVault. And a few things to point out about this page is that we can um, log in through any web browser. You'll see I'm logging in through Google Chrome. That's just out of personal preference. So if you prefer to use um, Safari, Microsoft Edge, Firefox, absolutely fine. You can access SmartVault from any device wherever you are. You can access SmartVault through your mobile phone. Uh, we do have an iPhone application as well, um, which is a really nice way to maybe if you want to just take a picture of a document, upload it straight into SmartVault. That is very doable. You'll notice here I've got a smart uh, well a logo. Um, this is 
basically uh, an example accounting practice I've set up called Valeria Accounting. Just to give you an idea, we can have this fully branded to you. So we could have your logo here. We could fit the portal with a color scheme, which is consistent with your website. And we can also link with your website. So we could have a tab in there that says something like client login or client portal. The idea behind that is that your clients are gonna to go to your website. They're then gonna click on that login tab and be redirected to their portal. But again, it's fully branded to you. So it looks like an extension of your website and your clients don't really feel like they're working in a smart vault environment. Now I'll jump into the folder section here, and this is where you'll be spending the bulk of your time in Smart Vault. And you can see we've split that into three sections. So we've got clients, employees, and firm. We can, of course, add other sections if we want to, and we feel these kind of cover the main areas. Now starting off in the firm section, we've got internal documents and public documents. So public documents is a place where all of your clients will have access to. So if I'm a client logging into my portal, I can see my individual folders, and I can also see public documents. So it's a really useful way to send out any generic information to your entire client base at once, which really helps save you time. Maybe if you're currently email, emailing those documents one by one. A few examples here would be terms and conditions, privacy policies, newsletters. We've had a lot of our clients this year use this to share information around COVID and the furlough scheme. And before that, we have a lot of clients use this to store welcome packs. So maybe if you take on a new client, you could put some documents in there which give them a bit more of an introduction to you and maybe if you need any initial documentation from them they can visit that in there on the other side of public documents is internal documents now this is just going to be for internal eyes only so none of your clients can see this it's kind of set up just for members of staff to um, put away any internal storage for their own future reference so it could be um, let's say hr records cvs training documents as well it could be set up like a company intranet. So if you're maybe using something like OneDrive or a local machine to store internal data, this part of Smart Vault would replace that. Another internal folder is employees. Now you can see I've got a folder in here for myself. In here, we could pretty much have a list of each member of staff. And in that folder could be any personal document associated to them. It could be an employee contract, an employee handbook, again, any HR records. Now, the nice thing about this is that it's completely controlled and restricted with access rights. So we can make sure that one member of staff can't log in and view someone else's personal folders and view their contract. It's completely restricted. So as a maybe a member of staff, all I can see is my folder. The main area you'll be using in Smart Vault is the client section. So you can see here we've got our client list broken down A to Z and in the A to D section at the top. I've got my client here, Andrew Abbott. Now, straight away, when we go into our client here, we've got our client folders. And with Smart Vault, we've got two ways of creating folders. There's the manual way, something which you might be used to when using things like uh, Dropbox, Google Drive, OneDrive, where you just click here, create a new folder, and then you're manually typing in those folder structures um, over and over again, which can get quite time consuming with each client that you're having to do that for. Now, the other way, and this is how Smart Vault really nicely gears towards the accounting profession is with our folder templates. So how they work is when you add a client to Smart Vault, Smart Vault is asking you what type of client that is. Is it an individual, an entity, a PLC, a partnership, limited company? Based on the information you provide, Smart Vault is going to automatically apply folder structures on that information, which we would have set up on the back end with one of our consultants. Then Smart Vault is going to ask you what types of services you provide for that client. You can see here I'm doing some tax, payroll, VAT. Again, based on the information I give Smart Vault, Smart Vault creates all of those folders, all the subfolders, and applies access rights and notifications. So you can see here these folders at the bottom, we've got these little people on them. That means that your client will have some level of access to this folder. Whereas these folders at the top, they're completely internal. So none of your clients will be able to see this. They wouldn't even know that it's there just for your eyes only. Now the folder templates are completely customizable. So when you create an account with Smart Vault, we get you booked in with one of our consultants to not only set up the entire portal, set up integrations and train you on the software. When it comes to those folder templates, we basically walk you through those steps. We say you know, with your tax folder, um, are there any subfolders that you want? What access rights and notifications do you want to apply? The idea behind that is that every time you apply that template, your client, you know exactly what folders are going to that client. So it really does speed up that process. 
Now I'll go into the tax folder here to show you exactly how those access rights work. So if I go in the 2021 year here, we've got these subfolders again, which SmartVault has created for me. So you can see we've got client questionnaire. My client might have edit rights in here, so they can log in and edit a questionnaire I've sent them. Client source documents, they might be able to upload to, whereas tax returns, we might just restrict that access so all they can do is view those documents. So if I go to the settings cog up here, if I go back one step actually, if I go to the settings cog in the client source documents folder, and then look at the access rights, you can see there's two people that can see this folder. So it's myself as the user, that would be you as the accountant, and then my client as the guest. My client is able to read, create, and write. That means they can view documents, they can upload documents, they can also edit documents in here. And whenever my client logs in to send me a document, I receive a notification through my email that something has been shared with me. In that email notification will be a link, and that link will take me straight to the document which has been shared. Now on the other side, we have tax returns, which I've just mentioned is a, is a folder I've set up to send something back to my client. So if I go back to that settings cog, look at the access rights, you'll see I've now restricted it for my client. So all they can do is view the documents I'm sending them. They can't edit my work, they can't delete my work. Ideally, I don't really want them to upload to this folder. I wanna keep it nice and simple for them on their side with not having too much to worry about and keep it nice and tidy, really. Whenever I send a document to my client, they receive a notification. And that notification could be, um, again, fully branded in the email. We can set up an email template, some wording that you're happy with. And you will also receive a notification when your client has viewed that document. So it saves you the hassle of maybe chasing them, as I mentioned earlier. If you have multiple members of staff who need to look at this folder for this client, we can, of course, add them here, play around with their access rights. In a similar way, if you have more than one point of contact at your client, we can, again, add them here and play around with their access rights. Send link is a really handy tool. So maybe you've sent out a document to your client, but they haven't, they haven't actioned it, they haven't viewed it or so on. We can basically send an email from SmartVault. We can select the person who we want to email, type in our message, and then when we click send, a link to the document which we want them to action will be included. So they just have to click on that link and then basically do what you've asked them to do in your personal message. In terms of the searching capabilities of SmartVault, we can search throughout the folders with our clients. We can also search within a document for a text layer PDF document. So if I open up this document here, and if I just pick out a word, let's go for 2,400 here. This is quite handy if you just want to find the document straight away, which has got that in there. And there is that document. So SmartVault will look for that, um, the word or the number you've put in the search box, and it's going to pull up the document that has got that in there. So quite handy as well. So I'll jump into the accounting folder now and I'll show you how we can actually get documents into SmartVault. So there's two ways we can either drag and drop where we can just take a document, let's say from our desktop and then just chuck it in here. Or we can click on this space at the bottom and then our Windows folder structure or if you were using a Mac, your finder section will just pop up here and then you can scroll down and choose the document you want to send to your client. That's now being uploaded and your client would have just received that notification if we've set that up for them. At this point, SmartVault has just encrypted that document to the standard AES-256, as I mentioned earlier, and we've also backed it up in several locations. Whilst I'm on this as well, we can upload any file type and the maximum file size is two gigabytes. So you've got a pretty big amount of room to, to upload a lot of documents if it's, a, if it's a big document there. We do also have unlimited storage, so you don't have to worry about reaching the, the limit of what, what you can upload to SmartVault. So it's completely unlimited for TaxCalc clients. Now we do, for compliance, have a really nice activity log. Now this is basically an audit trail of everything happening inside the system. So you'll be able to see who's logged in and what exactly they're doing. So that could be from a member of staff point of view, it could be your clients as well. Now you can see I'm the only person on this account, but you can see I've logged in here, I've previewed a file, I've created a file, I've deleted a file. We can see what the file is. We can also see when that action occurred and who by. So just really good for GDPR because it shows that you know exactly what's happening with all that data. And the Information Commissioner's Office, the ICO, they're the people who audit against GDPR. If they ever do come knocking, this is a really great system to show that you've implemented to keep, keep track of what's happening with all of your data. We do also have a recycle bin, which I found very handy recently, accidentally deleting a document. 
So if you do ever accidentally delete a document, we can recover that from up to 90 days. And you can see I've just been uploading and deleting the same document here. Another uh, step towards some good compliance is version control. So if I open up this document here, my 2018 workings, at the top here, we've got this little icon which says V3. That means the document I'm looking at right now is the third version of this document. Now, if I want to click this icon, SmartVault is going to show me the previous version history. It's going to show me who's logged in, made those changes, and when those changes were made. So if you ever want to refer back to the original document or the second version of this document, SmartVault is always keeping a track of that. So very handy if you've got multiple people working on documents. And whilst I mentioned that, if you do have multiple members of staff who need to work on the same document, they aren't able to work on it at the same time, which avoids the confusion of maybe people are making different changes and then saving documents. So if I'm already working on a document and Jamie wants to access that document, he'll be locked out until I've come out of that document and he'll be able to see the most updated version, which I've just worked on. So now going into the client section, and this is where we would onboard your clients. Now, as TaxCalc clients, it's a really uh, simple process for you because we can basically just copy all of your clients from TaxCalc and put them into SmartVault. If you do take any new clients on, uh, we can add that client in TaxCalc and straight away send it to SmartVault. So you don't have to deal with the hassle of uploading it in two separate locations. If you are just going to upload to SmartVault though, all we have to do is click add client and type in this uh, information here. And then we can um, we can also import an Excel spreadsheet or a CSV file. Now to import, um, to actually invite your clients to set up their account, all we have to do is click on the left hand side on the clients that we want to invite. We can select them all at once. Then we click this envelope which says invite client. So at this point we send out an email which again could be fully branded to you. We can set up an email template so some wording you're happy with. In that email will be a link which says activate my account. So your client would click that, they'd be taken to a web page where they just fill in their name, email address and password. Once they've done that, they're an activated user. These are the people who can now log in and see the documents I'm sharing with them. They can also send documents back to me through the portal. Now to add some of those folder structures, um, it's really simple one. I mentioned we do this based on client type and we actually have the same client types as TaxCalc. So based on the information you've already put into TaxCalc, and then when you put it into SmartVault, some of those folder structures, which um, you would have set up with our consultant, they're, always, they're all, already gonna be created for you. So that's already uh, speeding up that folder making process. Now, if you wanted to add some, let's say tax folders for these clients at the top for the upcoming year, we can just select them here. We then click this button, and then we get a list of all of our folder templates we've had set up. Treat these as examples. As I said, we can customize them to, to what you want. So if I want to do some tax work for the upcoming year, I could change the year here, then click save. At that point, all of those folder templates, the subfolders, the access rights and notifications, they'll be applied for each of those clients you've just selected. So again, speeds up that process and really helps build a bit of consistency from one client to the next with your folders. Now I mentioned we do have those desktop applications as well. And in here, we have two ways of working. So the first is in our Windows folder structure. So you can see here on the left-hand side of my um, Windows Explorer, I've got my SmartVault drive. And as I click through these folders, you'll see that it's just mirroring everything I've shown you already in the cloud. So I've got my client list, my client here, Andrew Abbott. If I go to that accounting folder, that document which I've just uploaded is straight away available on this area as well. So this is still cloud-based. Now, nothing is stored locally. So if you were to make a change in the cloud, it would appear here and vice versa. The really nice thing about this is that you can, let's say you're working in a, a Word document or an Excel document and you want to save it, you can just save it straight into SmartVault and then it'll appear in all areas of, of SmartVault, so the cloud as well. This would mainly sit on your main computer, whereas the cloud portal, of course, as I mentioned, you can access from wherever you are from any device. Now, the other way we have of working on the desktop is with our SmartVault connected desktop. Again, this is all included in the same plan and it just comes down to personal preference on how you want to work. So you could work out of, I'd say the majority of our clients work out of two, maybe sometimes three of the environments. It's usually the cloud and then one of the desktop side of things. But there are a few other things we can do here. So if I want to um, add some folders for this client, you can see for my tax folders, I've got some 
um, folders for the 17, 18 year, 18, 19, 20, 21. So if I right click on that client and I want to add some of the new folders, I can go 21, 22. They've just been added straight away. There's all the subfolders. And you can see the access rights have also been applied because we've got all these little people on the folder, which again means your client has some level of access to this folder. We do also have a PDF printer. Now this is a really handy tool that would work with any existing software that you currently use. So if I go into Word, I've got a uh, payslip just in a Word format here. So if I go File and then Print, you'll see my default printer is now SmartVault. And when we print, we're going to convert that as a PDF. So I click print. Then we'll get this little grid pop up asking how do we want to save into SmartVault. All we have to do is jump back here, select the folder we want it to go to. And then you'll see at the top here, that's been updated to go to my folder for August for the payroll. So I click to save. And now that payslip is being uploaded as a PDF. We do also have another way of printing documents, which is called our auto filer. That means that we can tag certain information about the document and based on the information that we tag, it would create those folders straight away for us. So we could say if this is a payslip, but we don't have those folders already. SmartFold is going to print that document. All those folders will be created and then that document will be printed in one of those folders. Now, if you are one of those people that think maybe your clients wouldn't be you know, willing to use the portal to get hold of their, their documents, we can still securely send these documents over email. So rather than just emailing them and not protecting them, what SmartVault does is we're going to encrypt that email and we're going to password protect the document. So we right click on the document we want to send, click send to mail recipient. You can see here, we're going to encrypt the email and password protect it. So when I click send, I'm prompted to type in a password for my client. When I click open, SmartVault creates the email for me. And if I was a client logging in here to open up this payslip, I'm now prompted to type in a password which has just been set for me. Now, ideally, we want to be using the portal. It's probably going to be the most easy and secure way for everyone involved. But for those clients that can be a bit tricky, this is a nice alternative. Whilst we're in the email, I'll show you we do have a folder for correspondence. So if you've got any particularly important emails that you want to store away, maybe there's something in writing in there, we can get that email into SmartVault. If you currently use Outlook, we do have an Outlook plugin. So you can see at the top here, I've got this little SmartVault logo and it says upload attachments. But if we click, click the drop down arrow, we can upload the entire email. So if you do have clients that are still sending you documents in, um, in email, we can just upload the attachment. So we click the button and then we get a list of our folder structures and we just have to basically go to the folder we want it to upload to click upload, that email attachment is now in SmartVault. We can also reply to that client. Let's say if we want to, yeah, we could say, thanks for sending this through. Next time, could you send, this, send it to this folder? So we can insert a link to a folder in SmartVault. So we click send link, insert, and then we could say, let's say it was a bit of tax work for this year, client source documents. Now all my client has to do is click that, that link, they'll then be taken to their portal where they can upload to that folder. Then hopefully that really gets them in the swing of using SmartVault as well to upload their documents securely. If you don't use Outlook, we can still get those emails into SmartVault. We can either drag and drop that email or we can use that printing functionality, which I just showed you as well. A few added features as well in the desktop application is a really nice one where we can merge PDFs. So you can see I've got a document here. If I right click and then click edit, we can basically find that other PDF we want this to be, let's say this document to be as a whole in line with, we can browse for that on our local machine. We can open it up and now they're all part of the same document. And we can of course shuffle around the pages as well. This is where we really do become in, get into the realms of document management rather than just storage and file sharing as well. So we can um, add a note to a document. We can say spoke to client, we could highlight a certain section and we can add a stamp. So this is really handy for status tracking. So you can say this document is being reviewed, it's been filed, it's been mailed. 
your client would also have access to this. So your client could log in here and approve that document. And any stamp that is added to a document will appear in the activity log that I showed you earlier. So you've got proof that on this day, your client has logged in with their login credentials and then they've accessed this document and approved it. Now, the final thing I'll show you is that client portal. So you have an idea of exactly what your clients are going to experience when they upload and share documents with you. So if I log back in, that's my client. Now, as I mentioned, we do have two-factor authentication. I've turned it off just for demo purposes, but you can use that as an extra layer of security. And when I log in as my client, you'll notice the functionality available they've got, that they've got is a lot, other, a lot less than what you have. So we just tried to strip it back, made it really simple and easy for them to use. Of course, they've got their own, they've got their own job to crack on with. So I can access two areas, my individual folders and then public documents. If you do have any clients who are involved in multiple entities, they would only have the one login for Smart Vault. They would just have each of their entities listed down here, then click into the relevant one. So if I go into public documents, I can almost see that client library of documents, that resource center with all your generic information. So if I'm a client who just wants to double check your terms, conditions, or look back on an old newsletter or any of your COVID updates, I've always got access to come back and do that. And then there's my individual folders. So you can see the folder structures here are a lot less than what you had because we restricted access to a few of them. So my client is able to log in and if we go into those access rights, you can see those folders which I've just added are straight away available for the client. So they're constantly syncing both all environments. If I go into that 2021 year and then go into client source documents, you'll remember I, I gave this uh, my client access to use this as a way to share documents back with me. So as a client, I can click here and I can choose a document to upload and send to you. Or I can drag and drop, of course. Whereas tax returns, I restricted the access. So all I can do is log in and view the documents that, that you as the accountant have sent. I can't, I can't delete your work, I can't edit it. All I can do is view it from here. This button at the top, upload documents, that's really handy for your clients. Rather than filtering through various folders to find the right place to send you a document, as a client, I can just click up here then Smart Vault is going to show your client every folder you've given them access to to send you something. So I can go to that, that folder again and then upload. So it's a really simple process for, um, for your client there. As I mentioned, we do have complete uh, training on onboarding as well. So we make sure that you as the accountant know exactly what you're doing and get the best out of your software as well. Um, but that does wrap up the demo. I'll hand back um, to Jamie, who's going to show you how the integration with Smart Vault works now. Thanks, George. I'm going to jump into my part of the presentation. So let me just share the right screen. Fantastic. Before we jump into uh, the TaxCalc side of it, just highlighting as well the integrated eSign functions that TaxCalc offer too. So we've developed a bit of a workflow pattern between the two systems so you can use them in tandem. And the way that really works is that you can use the document manager system with all the features uh, available including version control to uh, publish your draft copies of tax returns and accounts to the client's uh, vault and then once you've kind of agreed upon your final documents the best practice would then be to use the TaxCalc eSign Center to send those documents to the clients for the final legal signature and we'll show you in just a second there's a quick link from eSign Center so that those final documents can be stored uh, for long-term client access so yeah the idea is that the clients wouldn't need to get in touch with you again to access their you know their previous tax returns hopefully they can self-serve that great so let me come out of the presentation and show you some of the features in tax calc so what we'll do first of all is show you the uh, client uh, syncing and the link up. So George mentioned earlier that new clients created in TaxCalc will be created in Smart Vault and invited to, to the platform. So I'm in a limited company record here. You can see if you're familiar with TaxCalc, you've got all the different sections of the information pertaining to that company on the left. And we've introduced this new tab called Document Manager. That will show you which client it's linked with based on the email address in Smart Vault. And if you haven't created that link before, the button will say Enable Clients, 
and you click on that list, uh, click on that button there, and it will give you a list of the clients currently stored in Smart Bolt. So if they're already in there, you can link them up. If they're not, you can create that new client straight from the dialogue. Great. So then how do we kind of manage and move documents into Smart Vault? Well, we've got, we've got a few areas that you'll start to see buttons called Send Document Manager. So I'm in Andrew Abbott. We saw uh, them in the demo earlier, same client. And I finished their personal tax return for 2020. And at this point, let's say we're ready to upload that into Document Manager, either as a draft copy or as I say, as a completed final version. So we click Send to Document Manager here, and what we should be prompted for is, first of all, to check which documents we want to send in. So it does make it really easy to send multiple documents in at once. And in this case, I'm going to select the tax return and the SA302. I'm going to click Send, and that's going to open up our connected desktop um, interface that we saw earlier. So again, there's three different uh, views into Smart Vault, web browser, connected desktop, or your kind of file structure. And it's gonna give us the ability to select which folders we want to upload this to. So, um, it's just taking a moment to do that. I think go to webinar slows my machine down a little bit, so please bear with me. And so selecting the client there, selecting the folder, it allows me to just simply upload it into that section there. So great, just select the, the option. And it's all uploaded. So uh, you haven't you can't see that on my other screen, but I've um yeah just had a notification to say that that has now completed and um it's launched me into the web browser as well to access that document if I want to see it through there too. So great, same document in the web browser here and also in the connected desktop app. And of course, based on your notifications, like George says, that will um, be something that the client then has visibility um, and notified to access. Fantastic. So you'll see that button as well throughout accounts production, VAT filing, company secretarial, wherever you need it really. So rather than creating PDFs, exporting them and sending them into Smart Vault, there is that quick link there. As I said earlier, we've also got the eSign Center function. So this is the control list we have within eSign. And at this point, what we would expect are a number of documents coming back to us. So you can see this um, eSign completed document from the 3rd of November. And again, you've got that quick link there. So I can simply upload the permanent final copies straight into Smart Vault. Great, and of course, we, we do plan to tighten the integration even more uh, over time. So. We hope that in time that, that there may even be a fourth view where you can access or at least view the documents from within TaxCalc itself as well. Just to highlight on your home screen, on your launcher, you'll also have a quick link into the web browser portal. So again, that's gone to my other screen, but I'll just drag that across to show you the web interface there as well. So yeah, a really nice um, seamless experience for both your staff and hopefully your clients. And um, yeah, a nice way of kind of collaborating um, some of your key documents with them on an ongoing basis. Fantastic. So um, just to fight, just to finish off, uh, a couple more slides and bits of information for you. So if I start from this slide, hopefully you can see that there. Okay. Um, yeah, pricing and next steps and options and what you get within your plan. Um, we can get a fantastic price for tax account customers, whereas you would usually see on their website that uh, a plan of Smart Vault, uh, the enterprise level is $480 per user per year. And we're offering that and coming to market at just £180 per user per year. So a fantastic discount for ordering through us. As George said earlier, it's unlimited storage. So there's no upper thresholds at all in terms of the amounts of documents and storage you can um, you can store in your vaults. And for convenience, it's all built through TaxCalc, so you can keep it all within your existing plans if you've got one with your TaxCalc software included. George, you want to talk quickly about the next steps if anyone's um, perhaps interested in adding this to their TaxCalc package, what the next steps and support are from Smart Vault to get you going? Yeah, sure. I, I will just clarify one thing as well, um, which um, I think we I forgot to mention. The yep. £180 is per internal 
user, so internal member of staff. So yep. with that, if you've got um, 10 members of staff who needed to access and work on those documents in Smart Vault, then it would be um, a license per each member of staff. And then with that, you get unlimited clients as well. So you can have as many clients as you want with no extra charge. In terms of next steps, as Jamie mentioned, it's kind of all sorted through Tax Calc um, in terms of purchasing those licenses. And once that's done, they'll let us know to basically create the account and we'll be in touch to arrange um, the training. So we can set up training webinars with where our consultants will show you exactly how to get um, your portal set up. Then they'll also book in a one-to-one -one session with you to make sure that you're getting the most out of that training and uh, you've got the portal set up to exactly how you want it. Brilliant. So yeah, some really great support there to make sure that you're up and running. I understand that will include include helping you figure out what your your folder structures will need to be and making sure that your you know your your vault matches your your process and your workflow really. Um, great. So just to just to finish and fi uh, finalise, um, yeah, we just like to uh, highlight a couple of other modules that are really supporting the. The remote working environment right now so perhaps you're looking at your your processes and your workflows particularly if you've got a remote team and um, just to remind you we do have um, some relatively new tools in that area including practice manager plus for advanced workflow and um, time recording if, if that's something that you want to monitor um, now perhaps you're not uh, you know next to your colleagues uh, in the office day to day uh, and also aml center and aml id checking there, there does still seem to be uh, an increase in uh, supervision from supervisory bodies on AML Centre. I spoke to a practice the other day who unfortunately has been selected to, do an, uh, to, to be audited by the AAT uh, in December. So uh, what a fantastic time with everything else going on at the moment, but um, good luck to them. Great, and we'll, we'll finish off with questions and answers. We've had quite a few questions come in um, throughout the webinar. Um, so we'd like to try and answer as many as we can based on the number of questions there there's probably two or three dozen so unfortunately we're not going to be able to have time to answer all of them um, but uh, let's pick a few um, so first of all there's a question here uh, George which I've tagged for you around migration from other document management uh, providers specifically virtual cabinet but is there anything that can be done to assist with that process yes so um, in terms of the migration from virtual cabinet um, as we're actually a sister company of theirs, um, we do have some internal expertise to um, basically, um, there will be a cost associated for that. Um, it's something which would have to be discussed, but it also means that that cost can get you out of your existing virtual cabinet contract straight away um, with no fuss. Um, but we can, of course, migrate those documents out of virtual cabinet into Smart Vault. Um, when it comes to other systems that you want to migrate uh, from, um, that would require us to basically have a kind of a, a scope of works call. So we'd get you on a call with one of our migration specialists and uh, work out how much data um, you exactly want to take out and, um, and really the process for that. Great, so yeah, perhaps speak to you in, in tandem with speaking to Tatscout to get some, uh, some more specific answers on that for your situation. Um, next up, we've got a question on, uh, I think integration with Sage, QuickBooks and Xero from Colin there. Is there any integrations yes. there? So there's a very uh, small integration with uh, QuickBooks and Xero. It's mainly around um, co kind of copying that client list from one to the other. So um, we are trying to you know, pick up conversations with those providers to actually get more of, of an integration. But for now, um, it, it is very small to be honest. But we can, of course, use that printing functionality to get any document from Sage, QuickBooks, Xero straight into Smart Vault as well. Okay, and is the price of tax of Smart Vault via TaxCalc time limited? I'm planning to move over to TaxCalc next year. I can answer that one. No, that this is the mar the, the price that we've gone to market with. It's not a special offer, as such. Um, it's the it's the price we've secured for the partnership. Um, so there's there's no time limit on that at the moment. Uh, so yeah, I hope that's helpful to know. Uh, just a quick question here um, on signing of documents. Is that through TaxCalc or can the clients e-sign on the portal? Um, so no, at the moment, uh, it's just through TaxCalc. So George, I don't know if you can elaborate on that, uh, but um, yeah, I think it's just through TaxCalc at the moment. Yeah, so how I imagine it, how, how it does work is um, obviously we you'd go through that normal signing process with the e-sign centre in TaxCalc. And once you've got that document back from Signature, 
we can just put that straight into Smart Vault. Um, I think further down the line with the integration, we'll, we'll look to get that straight from, into the portal. Um, but again, uh, yep. we don't know exactly when yet. Yeah, that's a, a later phase, but definitely something on our radar. No problem. Um, let's just see if there's anything else we can answer. We've got a few more minutes. Um, Thank you everyone for staying to the end as well. It's great to see so many of you here. Um, a question here, will we still need a local server? No, um, you wouldn't really because Smart Vault can store everything for you. So essentially what, what a lot of our clients have done who have come from a local server and paying for that, sort of that server space, they've basically completely ditched it and put all of their documents in the cloud. And there might be some reservations around, you know, having all the documents in Smart Vault, but we are, we are backing those um, that data up in in three locations for you. So it's extremely secure and um, offers you that flexibility of working through the cloud. And a few questions on a similar theme around uh, usage with with Mac. Um, is is there anything that can be uh, yeah can be done through Mac as well? Sure. You've yeah. So so the cloud functionality is the exact same on a Mac. So you're not missing out on anything through the actual cloud portal. The desktop applications, you don't have access to the Smart Vault connected desktop, but you do have access to the Windows folder structure, which I did show you. So that would be in your finder section in a Mac. We are in the, the product roadmap, um, suggests that we are looking to add that connected desktop um, to a Mac at um, hopefully in the next year to come. But I'd say the majority of our clients at the moment um, tend to work out of, of the cloud. So um, for a Mac user, you, you don't miss out on that functionality. Great, thanks, George. And uh, yeah, question here, which I think is maybe similar to the local storage one. Does Smart Vault use storage space on your desktop if items saved into the cloud? I guess that would be uh, no again. No again, yeah. So we, we don't take any storage space on your local machine. So um, that obviously means if you are working on a local machine, the more data that you add, it probably is going to slow it down. But because we're all cloud based, every environment of Smart Vault that is completely scalable. Um, so you're not going to see any decrease in performance with the more data that you add and yeah nothing is stored locally great and a question on permissions can permissions be set for certain employees where they can view a document but not download it exactly that yep so the, we can get really granular with those access rights so whether that's a client or a or an internal member of staff we could um yeah we could make sure that they couldn't view certain documents maybe they could only um download or um, we can get really, really granular with that. So that's absolutely fine. Great, thank you. And a question here, what happens for those of us using TaxCalc on our desktop? Um, again, the integration is is there. So TaxCalc only produce uh, one version of their app and all that's changing if your cloud or desktop base is uh, where your data is stored. So yeah, there's no need to be confused around uh, yeah, the integration and, and what's available. If you're using a locally installed version of TaxCalc, you're still going to get the same integrations where you can upload documents into the cloud smart vault. So yeah, no, um, no, no worries there. And let's see if there's anything else we can answer quickly. Yeah, a couple of questions on recording of the webinar. Yes, that I believe will be automatically sent out afterwards. Um, but the main call to action really, if, if you have any questions or um, you'd like some more information, then please contact your TaxCalc account manager. That's just on sales at taxcalc.com. And um, yeah, we're on hand to uh, help you place any orders for licenses if you're ready to set something up for, um, you know, before self-assessment season really kicks off. Um, or if you'd like to do that um, in the new year, as a couple of comments suggest, no problem at all. A um, couple of questions here on Office Office 365 as well. George, does that change anything at all in terms of integration? Um, it, at the moment, the Office 365 integration is for, is through Outlook. Um, so that is the main kind of functionality we can offer from, from that uh, integration, which I did show. Yeah, so it's the same really, isn't it? It's just yeah. the latest version of, of Outlook, um, yeah. basically. And uh, time for one one quick last one. Uh, is the branding included in the fee? Correct. Yeah, it's all yeah. included, um, all the setup, absolutely fine. Great. Well, we tried to get through as many as we can there because there, clearly there has been some interest and uh, 
some further queries um, as a result of what we've shown, which is great. That's exactly what we'd, we'd hoped. Um, but as I say, we do have a list of all the questions, so we'll endeavour to get back to you um, either today or early next week with some answers for you. Um, but we hope that that's been a useful exercise. Um, yeah, one person here saying thank you, George, for, for the demo. Um, so yeah, well done. Uh, fantastic run through for us and introduction to the products. And as I say, next step in actions, if you've got any queries um, or you'd like to go ahead and place orders, please contact your TaxCal account manager. Probably the best uh, contact method is email. Just drop us a quick note. We'll find your account and be in touch with you as soon as possible. So that's sales at tapscout.com. And all that's left for me to say is thank you for everyone's time and hope you have a fantastic rest of your Friday and weekend. And uh, yeah, we hope to hear from you soon. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone.